David, uh, thanks for doing this. And I guess uh, two-parter, um, one, just kind of a timetable of how all this went down. Uh, and then it seemed when Nick was first brought over um, from Manchester as part of City Football Group that this was kind of part of a succession plan. Would that be fair to say, and if you could comment on that? Yeah, so I'll take the first question uh, first. So in terms of timing, it probably extends all the way back to MLS Cup Final and uh, the week the week after that, we started to have some discussions with Ronnie and uh, about extending his stay. I think it's we wanted Ronnie to stay in New York and we've been speaking to him for several months, um, even up until sort of early last week, exchanging um, ideas back and forth with him and, and his agent. Ultimately, towards the tail end of last week, Standard Liège came in and, and met a clause in Ronnie's contract that sort of switched the dynamic a little bit and en enabled Ronnie to have a decision of, of whether he wanted to remain in New York or, or leave. And and then Ronnie informed us that, that he wanted to, to move to Belgium. Um, and then so then the past few days has been trying to finalise and get everything in place for that to happen. Um, and then uh, obviously informing informing the team and and ensuring our next step was was well organized and planned and so that sort of transitions me on to Nick and you know, Nick's a fantastic coach he's um, so obviously been part of City Football Group for a long time um, I know when we spoke about him coming over from Manchester I think the goal for Nick was always to, to be a head coach again in the future and felt like this was a good next step in in his development to come to New York and you know so I think we we're very fortunate to have Nick in our in our group he's been played a huge part of our club for the last two and a half years he's been here and we're really excited to see him now step into the interim head coach role and, and looking forward to support him in every way we can. Okay we'll go to Tom Bogut next please. Thanks, Sam. Uh, thanks, Dave, for, for taking the time. Um, kind of following up on that, you know, what were those discussions like with Ronnie? And you kind of mentioned that they started around MLS Cup. Was this kind of about an extension? And, and you know, what, what, what was he kind of clear in the winter saying that if an opportunity presented itself to go back to Europe, that it, it's something that he might want to explore? Yeah, I think the, the conversations were fairly normal. We, we I think Ronnie was interested in staying. We were interested in keeping him. Um, and then I think the conversations have progressed over a number of months until we get to this point. And I think, you know, Ronnie said in the release today it was a really hard decision. And I know from speaking to Ronnie a lot over the last couple of weeks in particular, it's been it's been very difficult for him to, to try and decide. But, um, you know, we the, the plan was not to come into the season and, and have a coaching change in mid-season. I think we wanted Ronnie to stay. And, you know, we now get to this point where we weren't able to agree an extension before now. And um, and Standard Liège were able to, to meet a clause in his contract that meant he had a decision to make. And so um, you know, things were very amicable. We wish Ronnie and Anne Efra all the best. I think they've, they, they've been fantastic for New York. I think New York has been fantastic for them and their careers as well. And it was a, a mutual partnership that really worked, obviously culminating in last season's success. So... I think we're really excited for, for the group that we have and, and wish Ronnie and Effer all the best now at Standard Liège and um, hope, they, hope they continue their successful careers there. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to Grand Crooks. Hi, David. Uh, although it's not unusual, uh, putting the uh, interim tag on Nick, uh, suggesting that you'll be you know, at least talking to maybe some other people, and with that in mind, is Nick a, a strong candidate to get the permanent position? Absolutely. Um, I think we've we've made clear that we think Nick's a fantastic coach. And I think given the suddenness of the transition, I think it, it makes sense for, for all parties to sort of assess, see where things are, for everybody to be able to take a take a breath and, and go through this process. I think we want to um, look at external candidates and see if there might be someone suitable. But I think we're very fortunate to have a really strong candidate inside our own club in Nick, who, who's done a fantastic job, has been a head coach before and, and is someone that we really value really highly. So we're really excited for what he can do. Um, but I think we want to make sure that we sort of just take our time, go through a, a process, given how suddenly this came about towards the end of last week. Thank you. OK, uh, Jeff Carlisle. Thank you. Um... Yeah, my question is, how much of a delegator was Ronnie? And, you know, how much responsibility did he tend to give to his assistants? Or, you know, was he the guy to kind of take on everything and maybe not delegate as much? I think it's a mixture and there's probably different times in both the week and the season where um, a head coach would delegate and Ronnie in particular would delegate more to the assistants and, and then take on more. Ultimately, you know, Ronnie's the head coach and, and so was responsible for the decisions on team selection, all those things. But I do think one thing that Ronnie did with all the since he was here was to really seek 
the opinions of all of his assistants. We built a really what we believe is a really strong staff, and then we encouraged everyone to have their opinions. And I know Ronnie was a was a big believer in that. So the assistants were were heavily involved, and, and both myself and on players, on recruitment and support staff um, to try to make sure we came to to decisions together. But ultimately, Ronnie was was had the final decision, and so um, you know Ronnie's role at different parts in the week might look slightly different in terms of on the pitch, taking the training sessions or, or maybe Nick taking training sessions. So it varied throughout both the week, the season um, and and from probably from when Ronnie arrived to, to the moment he departed. OK, thanks. OK, we'll go with Roberto next, please. Uh, hi, David. How are you? Uh, obviously, not only do you look, you lose Ronnie, but you lose Efrain as well. And Efrain was an important linchpin between being able to talk to the Hispanic players on the team that may not uh, be able to communicate very well in English. How do you replace that part of what Efrain did uh, with Nick? Yeah, it's something that we're looking at, Roberto. Um, we know we've got to have a, a plan there. Um, we're talking about various different options, both internally and externally, to potentially see how we can add some support there. I think we do have a number of people around the facility that, that, are, that are multilingual. We've also got you know, a number of Brazilians who, who may not even speak Spanish and, and speak Portuguese. So, But I think we've, we've really tried to make sure we've got people all around the building that are multilingual to make sure that those players are, are connected. And you know, I know from speaking to all of them over the past few days how, how excited they are to, for Nick and, to, and to, to work with him now as the head coach. All right, thank you. Thanks, we'll go to Michael Andera next, please. Dave, thanks for taking the time. Uh, in the reporting about uh, Ronnie's departure, it was mentioned that there was a sizable fee paid from uh, Stan Liège. I'm curious how you think about that when you look at the next coach. Do you factor that in, that you uh, might have a, the potential to bring somebody in, have them uh, develop, and, then, uh, and have them uh, be an asset when they want to move on? I think the intention with coaches is probably not seeing them as as assets in that way we we want to attract people of really high quality of really high character who we can develop and who can be you know good ambassadors good good staff for the club um ultimately what's happened with ronnie as it's happened with other staff and other players is you know, when you have the types of success that we do it, it attracts interest from other people around the around the globe you know football's a, a world business and and so there's a lot of eyes on new york because of how successful we've been and and that provides opportunities for people but um i think we're not looking at it in terms of sort of assets in terms of our coaches i think what we wanted to do is protect ourselves contractually so that if a club as such a standard liege were interested in in our coach then we were fairly compensated and allows us the the opportunity to go and to go and uh, replace Ronnie in the way that we think is best for our club. Okay, we're going to Ryan Jabosi next, please. Hey David, I'm just wondering how if at all this whole situation impacts how you approach your job setting up this team this summer and for the rest of the season. Do you feel like stability in the squad is now more important just given the instability here? Well, I, I think there, while there is always some instability, I think we're actually really proud of the stability we've had despite this this move because you know we've I've in particular have tried to make sure that we've got a staff all around the head coach that that is in place and I think Ronnie and Ephra leaving uh, but we've also got our heads of sports science medical analysis operations all in place and so I think we're actually still in a very stable environment at the club um, and I think that's been a huge part of our success over the last four or five six years um, I think in terms of the squad I think the plans that we have I think are still the same um, we obviously going into the summer window and we will as always in every transfer window, assess if there are opportunities to improve our squad and to make changes that we feel will move us closer to, to winning trophies. Um, but that would have been the same with, with Ronnie or without. OK, we'll go with John Lupo next, please. Thanks, Sam. Uh, David, just a two-part question for me. Number one, how much of a factor was it that Nick was an assistant under Ronnie and there's constant being it during the middle of the season that there's a lot of continuity there, assuming they'll play the same style, same formation, same tactics. And secondly, what I know that you're very high on Nick promoting him to this position. What qualities do you think are, what do you think are his best qualities that will make him a successful manager? 
Yeah, so I think the having a methodology in place over several years, I think, has been a, another real strength of, of our club and allowed us to be so consistent in results over the past six, seven years. Um, and I think, you know, while new coaches come in and there will always be slight tweaks, even from Patrick to Dome to Ronnie, and I'm, I'm sure to, to Nick now, but having consistency in what you do, I think, is is a really big part of how you create sustainable success at a club. And I think that's something that we're all really proud of in New York. Um, in terms of Nick's attributes, Nick's a fantastic coach. He's done a lot of on-pitch coaching for the club over the last couple of years. He's got a fantastic relationship with the players and, and is a really good person. I think it's something that we we really value here is, is how good we want to have good people around. And, and, I, and I'm sure, you know, Obviously, the role is different from being an assistant to, to being a head coach. Um, but Nick's also got experience having done that before and having the difficult conversations with players and all those types of things that come when you are the head coach. Um, but Nick's, you know, Nick's been part of City Football Group for so long. It's absolutely ingrained in how we play and how we want to play. Um, and I think it provides a really good level of consistency for our for our players to continue the success that we've had so far this season. You know, we're, we're, we have the Open, Open Cup quarterfinal next week. Um, still in play for Supporters Shield, MLS Cup, uh, US Open Cup, Campionas Cups. So there's a lot of really exciting things to come for us and our fans the rest of this season. And, um, and I'm looking forward to seeing us try to compete for as many of those titles as we can. Okay, we'll go to Trey next. Uh, hi, David. Thanks for speaking with us. I'm wondering um, if you, speaking of departures and stability, is there uh, any update or can you confirm any of the reports about uh, no outside team meeting uh, your guys' value of Tati Castellanos and, and what the status of his potential transfer is as well? Yeah, so as, as everyone I'm sure can imagine, when, when you have a player performing at the level as Tati has consistently now over the past 18 months, there's a lot of interest and um, I'm expecting that interest to continue or potentially increase as sort of the, the summer market gets busier in Europe. Um, we've had a lot of interest, a lot of phone calls. We haven't had a, a bid we've received during Tati's time here yet that we've believed is acceptable and so you know I'm sure that will continue and the interest will continue and, and potentially bids will continue to come in for him because he's a fantastic player and is, is doing an unbelievable job for our team and so um, I expect that to continue but as of now uh, there's no no tangible update really we haven't received an offer that we think is acceptable and um, until that happens you know then then Tati remains in the team and we're looking forward to him continuing to perform and, and score lots of goals for us and and I'm sure there will be continue to be interest in him and we'll assess that when that when those offers come we'll assess that and, and decide if we think an opportunity is right for him okay we'll go with Michael Allen next please Thanks so much. Uh, yeah, thanks um, for making the time, David. Um, yeah, just losing a coach mid-season like this, how much or does that this change the expectations for the team this year in any way? And also, can you speak a little bit, elaborate about um, how the players are taking it, how they receive the news and, and whatnot? Yeah, it doesn't change the expectations at all. Um, I think we are... We, we believe we have uh, one of the most talented groups of people, players, staff, support staff, coaches um, that we've ever managed to assemble. Um, and, you know, I think the results, the first part of the season, we're not quite halfway in, but the first part of the season speaks to the quality of the group that we have. And so the expectations for us are, are always the same. We, we want to compete for every trophy we can. We had a fantastic run in the Champions League before, sort of not quite being able to, to get to the final. But, um, you know, we want to compete for all the trophies. And so this... While not ideal, it's not ideal to, to have a coaching change in the middle of the season. I don't. It doesn't affect what we hope and what our expectations are for this team this season. Um, and I think the players, um, the players for the most part, are used to this type of thing. You know, this is football. They've all been at clubs before. Um, you know, and so I think you know everyone is extremely appreciative of, of the work that Ronnie's done over the past two and a half years, and obviously had a fantastic relationship with our players. But you know, in speaking to a, almost all of the team over the over the past sort of three or four days, I think everyone's really excited and, and energized and and looking forward to working with Nick. Um, you know, and I think we're we're really excited about the season. So I think the players understand this is part of business, um, and you know, I think they're all really looking forward to getting back to on the pitch on Sunday and and uh, hopefully putting up a good performance against Colorado. Okay, we'll do a final couple of questions for for David, and then we'll move on to to Nick Cushing after. Uh, Jeff Carlisle, do you have another question? No, I'm good. Sorry about that. Okay, no problem. Glenn? Yes. Thank you, David. Uh, could you can uh, kind of compare and contrast? You've had two 
um, pretty large profile midseason coaching departures, Patrick in 2018 and now with Ronnie this year. Can you compare those at all in terms of the readiness for the club? And I, I'm wondering, was there a similar sort of compensation when, uh, when Patrick departed? Thank you. So I wasn't in sport director position when, when Patrick departed, obviously as part of the club. So I, it, I probably wasn't as close to the ins and outs of that transaction as, as I have been with this one. Um, I think they are similar in terms of time, but I think they're also very, very different. Um, you know, when Patrick left, I believe there was four members of staff uh, departed at the same uh, with Patrick when he went to Nice. This time we're only talking about two. Um, so I think that, that makes a difference. We also... Um, when Patrick left, we hired externally um, immediately to, to fill the role. And I think what we've tried to build is, you know, a succession plan and stability and have people in place who we believe are ready to have a next step in their career and, and next step for when those opportunities arrive. And we think that's the case, obviously, with Nick and and, uh, and Rob and, and Mehdi to continue the fantastic work that they've been doing for this club for several years. And so, um, you know, I think that the situations are similar in timing, but I think they are also slightly different both in, you know, a, I think how how stable I think we we feel right now and around the club, and I think that's been a really key part of our messaging to the players over the past few days is is the support staff and everything around the players is, is remaining very very consistent, um, and then and then like I say being able to be in a position and very fortunate position to have somebody like Nick who we believe is ready to, to step up and, and step into the head coach role um, is also slightly different than than uh, when Patrick departed uh, two thousand and eighteen. Okay. We'll go. Oh, sorry. Can I follow up, Sam? Sure. The uh, even though it's just two uh, two positions to fill, um, you know, knowing how CFG has been very careful in the selection process for their for their teams like New York City, do you anticipate that sort of process as well? And and how are you filling in? You might have addressed that a little bit with Roberto and the Spanish side of things, but how are you filling in? Because you know, roles are really specific, and now they're going to be. A little different yeah I think we'll, we'll go through like most decisions at our club we'll go through a really thorough and detailed process um, for any important decision whether it's a player signing you know coach any of those types of things so we'll make sure that the process that we go through to ensure that we make the right decisions just as we did in in naming Nick as the interim head coach it was uh, you know a lot of deliberation because we and we feel like it's the absolute right decision and so um, we'll make sure the process is is thorough um, and then, you know, in terms of roles, I think Nick will work out how um, we can supplement some other people's roles. Maybe people take on some more, uh, some more duties. Maybe some other people within the club may may do some other things as well. But I think we're really fortunate. We've got um, quite a, quite a good staff, a very good staff, and and lots of people in that are able to to take on more and to take on bigger roles, and um, and that can be helpful as part of their development as well. Okay, Thank you, Dave. we'll do the last question to David. We'll do. Joe Tolleson, please. Uh, David, question for you on, on the prep on this. And with 22 days off between the two games with this international break and how you said this sort of started at the end of MLS Cup, how much was there an emphasis on your part to get resolution one way or another at this point? I, I suppose if you're going to make a midseason coaching change in a break like this would be the ideal place to do it. And then also from what you're saying there, it almost sounds like this is Nick's job to win or lose. So I, I think I think there was motivation on on lots of sides to to have some resolution to the situation during this break. I think that that that's fair to say. You know, we'd spoken to Ronnie and his representatives that we we felt like this was a good opportunity without the distraction of, of games. You know, the players and staff all had uh, you know a, a week or so off after after the Minnesota game. Um, you know, obviously now we're we're in the week preparing for Colorado. So I think it's it's good for our team for everybody to have clarity on on what the situation looks like for 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 the coming games and the coming weeks and. As I've, as I've said, I think Nick is absolutely a candidate for 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 the permanent head coach role. Um, we think he's a fantastic coach and a fantastic person, and and we're looking forward to seeing how how the team reacts and adapts to to what he asks of them. Um, but we absolutely think he's a he's a candidate for the for the full time permanent head coach role.